Welcome everybody out. Um, our wellness, natural wellness applications uh, online class with Jade Baldwin. Tonight's topic is the literal language of your body. So when your body is talking to, to you, we've uh, talked about this a little bit before with some other um, classes, but this is the special topic for tonight. So um, um, I've introduced Jane before, but um, I'll, I'll just let her talk because everybody that's joined us tonight is familiar with Jane. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time either on YouTube or on um, the podcast, um, you know, please see our other podcasts. And yeah, glad to have you with us. So welcome everybody. And I'll, I'll just share with you our screen. This is what we're looking at here is at jadebalden.com body link. For the body. And there's a lot of material on jadebalden.com, so if you ever need to find something, there's a very handy search box. Um, because let's face it, um, it's kind of hard to organize hundreds of things there. So, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, guys. Um, this is a really fun topic for me. I feel because. Um, um, it, it's a spiritual topic, actually. So um, this is actually part of the holistic paradigm. And uh, I think it takes the holistic paradigm a little much further. Um, because when I... Sorry, Henny, are you okay? I'm just going to mute everybody. If you, wanna, uh, if you have a question or something, you can unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. You good? You ready? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it worked. Okay. Okay. All right. So when I first started um, learning about health, it was all about symptom management. It was what oils for this one problem. And over and over, um, I just was a little bit frustrated with that. And then I, re then I found out that, you know, this is a little bit confusing too because the – there's different oils for the same problems. And I wondered why there were so many different approaches to the same problems. Um, why isn't there just the one you know, solution for that one problem? Um, and what I found out was that there's a lot of reasons why we um, have that health problem, even though on the outside it may be similar to somebody else's health problems. Um, but underneath the root cause of it is slightly different. And that's why, um, you know, you use one oil for this one person and then another oil for the other, another person with the same problem. And it works for both people. But, you know, like I had a guy say, you know, Deep Blue did nothing, but then white fur fixed the problem. And I was, you know, always wondered why. And then it led me to um, asking questions like, why, why do we have sickness, pains, and diseases in the first place? Um, you know, and I thought about this, and really um, what came to me was the, the fact that there is a reason, and, um, you know, God doesn't allow us to experience sickness and disease for no reason at all. We're, we're not just here. We're not just broken. Um, so I have conversations um, like this with many, many people and they say, well, I've got this problem and, you know, help, help me fix it. And I realise I can't help them resolve their problems permanently unless they are willing to look at it um, from this holistic uh, view, but also keep going deeper to um, the spiritual root of it all. So God is a loving, kind, intelligent father. And there, there's no reason why he would torment us just for his own pleasure, right? Or allow us to be tormented for no reason. So everything that we experience is for our own good, uh, for our own growth. And um, it's important for us actually to have pain and to have suffering in, in some ways because it, it motivates us to not be um, unbalanced. Um, it motivates us to to turn the other way and find truth and find light 
and find love and find healing. So, um, you know, I know that God could jump in and take away a lot of the things that, bad things that can happen to us, but he won't because um, it, this is our learning opportunity. And, you know, if we make stupid, self-destructive choices, um, you know, even that helps us learn. So, you know, I feel a, a great sense of, of love and peace and things make sense now to me. Um, and this is how come it is easier for me to help people heal. Um, because when I look at them and I try to get to know them better, um, and I see them as a whole and see what their body is telling us, um, you know, in that literal sense, it's really easy to, to get to the root of it and help them find solutions. I'm going to unmute everybody here for a moment. And I just want to hear from you what you think of that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I totally, completely agree. Our body's trying to help us. It's their signals to get in tune with our Heavenly Father and with our own spirit. Yeah. And the goal is to help us find happiness and joy. Yeah. You know, I had a recent um, meeting with a friend and um, he's like, I am sick, you know, I've got this disease. And, you know, it's not like you caught it out of thin air. You know, and they, they try to eat healthy, they try to do all sorts of things. Um, but they're really, um, it's, not, it's not like they're unwilling, but uh, they want to see. Oh, we might as well turn that off because it's going to disrupt. Or unwilling to see um, what the body is trying to communicate to them. Okay, so what is it that we're really learning? So we are learning to be more like God. And that's the point. Okay, so if we have this health problem and that health problem, ask yourself, how does that help you become more like God? You know, what can you release or um, uh, change to help you have more love, light and power? Because your spirit, your soul desires that. That's your natural um, need to have that love, light, and power. And your spirit will guide you towards love, light, and power because that's who we are. Because all of that will help us have joy, okay? Because that's our purpose. A lot of people say, I've got this health problem, that health problem, let's fix it. You know, as if that's, that's not, you know, related to um, their journey, where they're tr trying to go, what they're trying to do in life. And I always try to see this as an opportunity to grow um, because it is very much a part of your journey right now okay so sometimes I ask people where's the dragon like where does your body ask for the attention now because once you help that part of the body then the dragon moves right it's, it's sort of like peeling off a layer and then revealing another layer and all of this helps you become a better person um, the next thing I want to talk about is the body is a gift. It's a temple. Um, so our body houses our spirit and um, the body actually um, is, you know, if we can have the body being as, as connected to God as possible, it actually invites us to connect to God's spirit and God's spirit can dwell with us and um, give us more love, light and power because that's what we're trying to develop and um, trying to, to be like. And so, you know, the, in this body, we can experience the fullness of joy. So we have to work together with this physical body and, in finding joy, okay? And I, I tell a lot of people all the time when I work with them, I said, this is your, um, this is your purpose here. <clears throat> your purpose here is to love and try to develop love for, for yourself and for other people. And your other job is to find joy, okay? And if you can find your joy, 
you'll be able to set a good example and help others find their joy. Okay. Um, I like this scripture here. It's in um, the LDS scripture, the Doctrine and Covenants. And it's, um, it says, for man is spirit. The elements are eternal. The sp and spirit and element inseparably connected receive a fullness of joy. And when separated, man cannot um, receive a fullness of joy. So you see that our experience here is um, creating a more connected and powerful relationship with our body because our body and our spirit will be together and together it's going to find fullness of joy. So a lot of us are in our heads sometimes and we experience the joy in, in here, but it's not really um, the true fullness of joy that we're looking for. I, I like the saying where um, I said before, I don't know who said it, uh, we are spiritual beings mm -hmm. having a physical experience, not physical beings having a spiritual experience. Yeah. So when we are fully, fully connected, that's right, um, to our body, we, we receive a lot of information. So our whole body will communicate information to us. So when we are really, really connected, that's why I love patchouli. I, I teach people who don't love their body to use a lot of patchouli so that, you know, their heart and um, their, their heart brain <laughs> and their gut brain can communicate with their head brain. Okay. And then when you feel that inspiration, yeah, act on it quickly and, um, you know, you don't have time to sit there and hesitate. There's a lot of times, I think Debbie Westcott and I talked about this this morning, when we hesitate for a long time, our ego takes over and then we start to overanalyze the situation. And, you know, usually um, we, we stop ourselves because we let fear um, talk us out of things. And, um, you know, and often that fear will make us feel stuck and frustrated and unfulfilled. So instead of, you know, you know I, I tell people I'm kind of weird sometimes because I, I feel it and I do it and that I don't have a good explanation for it sometimes that I just do. And then later on when I look back, I say, oh, wow, these are the reasons why um, that choice was good. Instead of the other way around saying, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit here and then, you know, work it out what, why that is so good. But so if my heart, heart and my mind and my gut, you know, just says, yes, I go for it. I go for it, you know, before that ego jumps in and talks me out of it. <laughs> okay, because that's not helpful. I'm going to unmute you guys and just want to hear from you. Can I do it? Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to share? Did you have a specific question? Um, no, um, I'm asking about, uh, just talking about like what we said. That. I think, um, I, maybe I'm supposed to say this, I don't know. I think often, I think um, we disregard the body and its signals and how important they actually are, thinking that, oh, it'll be taken care of later or after this life or whatever. And I think that that's a mistake. Sorry about the background. Anyway. Yeah, um, yeah anyway, just, I just feel like that, that, the body is, like you said, it's talking to us all the time and letting us know when there's imbalances. And when, when there's imbalances, we know. We just know better now not to just focus on the symptom to actually get to the root. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when we resolve it, we know that it's going to lead us to a place of joy. And um, our life flows easily. And we find that we have more joy when we just honor it. You know, um, we only have like this 3% of our brain that's really logical. 
And a lot of people, when they have headaches, they overthink and they're just concentrating on just the thinking instead of asking their body, which is, um, you know, an instrument and gift from God to, to see what, um, you know, what the choice could be. And uh, I, I sometimes tell people, you hold on to that bottle of whatever supplements and hold it to your heart, hold it to your chest and see how your body feels about it. And just ask your body those questions. Is this, is this good for me? And then, you know, you sort of feel, yeah, yeah, this is good. I don't know why, I'm, this is just good. And other things that may look like it's good and you, you know, you hold on to it, you think, mm, no, something's wrong, but I, don't, I can't explain it, but it's just go for that, okay? Honour that. And kids do that, that really well. Um, and I encourage kids to keep developing that and, and not, um, you know, let their brains take over too much. Okay. So uh, let's see. So the physical body is truly a gift and it helps us um, have joy and it helps us uh, be guided. Uh, when it's all united, um, it's like us being more unified with God and, and we find that happiness. So we have this inner um, compass that guides us. So I think of um, if I were a parent, um, you know, sending my kids out to do something and I'm not gonna see my kids for a while, I would never send my kids out unprepared. You know, I'll do everything in my power to prepare them to make sure that they're successful in whatever they're doing. So if I, you know, if God being a more powerful, more intelligent, more loving being than me, then somehow I feel like he's got all of the success mechanisms and things inside of me and around me, you know, in my environment and to help me make it. You know, that it really, it really makes sense when you think of it that way, that you're not going to be here and, um, you know, trying to stay afloat all on your, on your own and, and struggling and suffering. You know, it's not what this, um, this life is about, you know, him watching you suffer. It's like, hey, I'm right here. Grab on to this floaty. It doesn't have to be that hard. And then um, that's, that's what I feel uh, is, is what uh, our body's trying to do. It's, our body's teaching us stuff. Um, so how do you read the literal language of your body? So we have the book, Feelings, Buried Alive, Never Die. And uh, most of you are familiar with it, the people here on the call. Um, but those of you who are not on the call, this book has a reference guide in the middle. Um, it has emotions and negative emotions, I mean, feelings, and then positive um, uh, alternatives to those negative feelings. But then also it has a section where, you know, you can look up knee problems, headaches or whatever, and then it shows you the emotion side of things and how you can um, uh, find ease and balance. So remember every imbalance in our body, there's a reason for that and, you know, the, there's a reason for our discomforts, our disease, and our distresses. Um, so some people might be asking, well, what about accidents? You know, what about things that just happen to you? Um, you know, there are things that do happen to us, and because of no fault of our own, um, you know, and even external things happen to us, and um, you know, we can actually still look those things up. You know, where, wherever we hurt, wherever we um, are in balance, or wherever we distress. Uh, in our body and try to resolve that emotionally to help um, create a healing and uh, expedite the healing. So uh, a lady named Laura Jacobs, some of you might know her, she said that her son was playing football and he injured his finger. So he, you know, he didn't just go, oh, my finger hurt because I played football. Um, he went to the Healing Spirit Alive book and looked at finger and then went to the, um, you know, and found out the emotions behind it and um, went to the emotion book and found uh, oils that took care of that emotion and he used those oils to help his finger heal faster. So that's how you use it. I already have a copy of that book. Um, let's see, sorry. Um, and I have a little reference guide here. Uh, ben has kindly put links on our website to help you um, 
find where to get these books, okay? You can get them online. Um, but they're really helpful, so and I true. think every family should have one. Just the mini me. Yeah, just to help you learn how to read your, your body. Okay, so people say, what about accidents and things? You know, well, you can't help that, can you? Well, I, I, I don't know. We might be able to help that in some ways. That a funny story of um, a friend that I'm going to call my, um, Mia. <laughs> okay, here in Australia, she she was a school friend, and it's kind of funny. At, you know, at lunch times in Australia, we would sit around in a circle in the courtyard or whatever, eating our lunch and chatting. And wherever she sat in our circle, um, something would happen to her. And so one time, you know, a basketball hit her, and you know, then she moved. Um, the next day, she's like, I'm not sitting there anymore. I don't want to get hit. And she moved to another spot and, um, you know, like bird pooped on her head and <laughs> just little things like that. So we kind of um, nicknamed her like accident prone. Um, and we went camping and uh, we, we had the canoes and we're all in the canoe and then it tipped over because we didn't know what we were doing. And we all were in the water and she fell in the water too, like all of us, but she fell right on top of a pointy rock. <laughs> so it's like how what <laughs> all of us and so anyway she thinks that she's very accident prone and it's kind of funny that she attracts that kind of thing uh, so you can see that um, sometimes it looks like you know chance and accidents but sometimes it's maybe we're attracting that stuff um, and I really like this scripture here uh, in Mark and it's Mark 7 in, in the scriptures um, seven and it's 18 to 23 and Debbie Westcott actually uh, shared this scripture with me a, a while ago um, and it's about uh, things on the outside um, and things on the inside and here the last scripture says all of these evil things come from within and and defile the man so sometimes when bad things happen to us it's how we respond it doesn't defile us even if we have yucky things our body knows how to metabolize and eliminate um, but uh, so when we have negative thoughts and, and negative emotions on the inside um, that's what really affects and ruins us okay um, anyone want to say anything about that I just think um, accidents happen and it's truly probably who you are and how you look at things that determine how that accident will be if it's a if it's a big thing um but my family had a big accident happen and um well i wasn't worried i mean i was worried but um i just knew that god would be there with me and so i wasn't overly worried about it and so um he was, he gave me strength for anything that I needed, but I looked through every challenge and um, through it all, like, um, I just looked back and I never regretted the accident happening because I saw so many different things that we learned through it and so many blessings that were spiritual experiences that we had that we would have never had if not that would fall on us, you know, if we weren't in that situation. Um, and it's lessons that you will remember forever that, you know, that just don't happen every day. And so I think that has a lot to help you later in life. Um, like with my kids, they can look later in life and remember that they weren't alone. They had an answer to a prayer. And even though it was hard times, we saw remarkable changes and things like that. So um, when I see other people in the same situation or just having a, an illness or something like that, I try to remind them that they're truly not alone and that this is just a challenge, but it's a challenge that can be overcome. That medicine, like uh, practical or, you know, doctors don't always have the answer for, but, um, it's going to teach you something and you're going to get through it. Um, but just to watch because later you'll look back and you will be able to see like these challenges and signs taught you a great 
a, a great deal about yourself and about your family later, even though it's hard in the moment. But yeah, things happen. But <laughs> Thank you. I really like how you said that it's going to teach you lessons. And there's some noise. I don't know where. So it's this. There's something um, that you need to learn, and we shouldn't sh uh, shy away from feeling pain because we're we're going to survive it. We're going to be okay. Um, and sometimes when, you, when you're so scared of feeling that pain, it's sort of like um, denying yourself of the opportunity to feel that same level, but of joy. Okay, so it's it's um, it's hard, but we can get through it, and it strengthens us, like you said. I, I really like that. Thank you for sharing. Like one time, I remember telling our kids that we were living in such a state that we were so close to the spirit always being with us that like I just said, you know, one at some point we're not going to need the spirit with us, and it's going to feel different in our lives because right now we're so moment by moment and connected as a family and looking for answers and then being excited about um, something getting better and you know a little small um, accomplishment and such a big thing that was a uh, road to recovery so um, but I knew that that was just temporary but it let us know that we could strive through the hard times and if you work through ailments and sicknesses um, you will see the result and it just takes that time and that space um, because it's it's what we're meant to do and, and that there is a purpose of that and you can't you can't always know what it is in the moment so you just have to um, accept it and then work through it it just working through it and being patient with yourself as you heal because you'll feel better but then you see like Oh, I'm not where I want to be, but you just have to acknowledge the little goals, like the little rewards that you did, and you know you'll just feel different about it as you accomplish and get better just a little bit. Just having, well, I'm not over it, but I feel so much my neck or my back or my whatever the ailment is, I'm so much better than where I was before I started this, you know. So um, the little gratefulness and all the small accomplishments along the road really will uplift you when you look at it that way. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I like how you said the, you know, little accomplishments. That's your gauge, isn't it? Your gauge that um, you're, you're healing and you're on the right path. Yeah. So we'll move to emotion is energy. Uh, a lot of people don't uh, realize that. They just, they separate it. Um, but if you tell people, what about when you, people are worried? When you're worried and in, uh, over an extended period of time, uh, you, your body starts to get sick, you know, and everybody's seen that. And so, and everybody accepts that. But then um, not a lot of people can recognize that there's a connection there. We, we have to point it out, say, look, there is a connection. That, you know, sometimes when you have somebody that's really, really stressed for a long, long, long time, their body does break down and get sick, right? And they're like, yeah. And then you say, well, there's other emotions that cause us to be sick too. Um, and we have to address those other emotions. And uh, the body will help you because the body has, um, the body is a similar matter to the spirit, except the, the body is more dense. And um, so whatever happens in the spirit happens um, in the body eventually, and the body will tell you where, um, where the issue is. So if we look at um, this scripture here, it's an LDS scripture, um, and it says, and uh, I did it because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is an iron sinews, and thy brow is brass. Okay, so neck is about, or stiff-necked is about stubbornness, inflexibility. So here God's saying, you're so inflexible, you're so tight and, and focused on your, your own way. Um, and uh, so you, you can heal your life. Louise Hay says that the neck is about refusing to see other sides of the question, so other possibilities. And the brow is about wisdom, right? Why did that, uh, why is it mentioned in the scriptures about the brow, right? If, if you know, we don't have like lots of brow disease or anything, but it's, it's saying that you're lacking wisdom, right? You're lacking that true wisdom. Um, that it's really good to uh, to see that it's in the scriptures, right? 
Um, and here's the chart that I have for the literal language of the body. It's a quick reference. So if you look with me here, we'll start with the feet. Um, you know, uh, problems uh, with the feet is about fear of the future, fear of moving forward. Okay, and the next one over here, can you see the cursor there? Yeah. yeah. So um, fat is um, the fat, extra fat deposits about feeling the need for protection because we're so fearful. Okay. Um, hips, you know, if we have hip concerns, um, hip is about fear of making major decisions. All right. Um, so when our body hurts and when there's something wrong, it says, you know, try to just change and do, do that instead of um, overthinking or, or worrying about that big major decision so much, um, you know, mm -hmm. you're okay. You, you know, let, let God take, take care of it. Um, and, you know, left arm is not receiving enough uh, for yourself, but that's spiritually, okay? So not giving yourself enough nourishment and uh, um, that's your left arm. So if you have problems, but problems on your left arm, that could give you a clue. For shoulders is bearing burdens that doesn't belong to you. So you're taking on other people's responsibilities um, and it's just giving you a clue that, you know, let go and let them take over, let them mess up a little bit um, and, uh, and they will learn, okay? Trust that they're smart enough just because God trusts us and God, and he'll trust them too, but they'll figure it out, okay? So head is about impatient with self, holding on to limitations and trying to wrap your head around things that you don't really understand and you don't need to fully understand. So I, I tell people that to lean not unto your own understanding, all right? That's a really, really good clue when um, we have that headache. That's why I tell people to really connect with your body. Does it make sense in your heart? Does it make sense in your gut? Um, then just go for it. And then you figure all the reasons out in your head too later on. It will it'll, it'll all come together. Okay? And don't need to have all of the information because if we have all of the information, all now, we know everything that we need to know, then there's no need for faith, is there? Yeah. There's no need for faith because faith is about not knowing everything and trusting. So the neck, we already talked about that, inflexibility of mind. The right arm is not giving enough for self physically, not taking care of yourself physically. Um, elbow uh, on either side is about inability to accept new experiences. Um, knees is inflexibility or stubbornness, not bending. And uh, ankle is guilty and fear of failing. So how do we identify and resolve um, these concerns? So you can look it up. Say, we'll just talk about headache, for example. Um, I, I mentioned that earlier. So if you look up headache, it, it tells you a, few, a little bit of information about the headaches. But what you can do is um, say, oh, you know, I don't have to know everything. Um, my head hurts because I am trying to think too much. And... Um, you know, I, I don't need to have all of that information, okay? Uh, so sometimes when the head gets too much to bear, um, you're forced to lie down. And when you're lying down, it's an opportunity for you to listen. And sometimes we block that feeling, you know, take a medication, and, and, but it doesn't resolve the problem, okay? And if we don't um, learn to fix it and we ignore it and we try to switch it off, guess what? you know, you're going to be on replay and replay and replay until you really get this. So you'll have Groundhog's Day often. <laughs> and, um, you know, people say, oh, I'm, I'm like this. I have this problem and I have, it often, I have it a lot. And it should give you a clue. Hey, why don't you resolve it so it doesn't repeat? Okay. Because um, that's what we do to ourselves. So the, a solution would be to... Um, Turn to God and ask him for guidance and trust your gut and heart because your gut and heart will help you. That physical body will give you clues and answers when it's already here. The answer is already here and you're not seeing it. Um, and so whatever the initial inspiration was before you started overthinking it, what was that? So go with that. Okay. And, um, you know, be open to new possibilities. So that's what the solution is. And you find it in the book. Um, 
and we use essential oils to help us because we don't have to do it alone um, and it's kind of difficult to do alone sometimes but we can use an oil like frankincense and frankincense is the oil of truth it says trust in the light of god it says relax let god's intelligence flow through you um, so smell it rub it and even ingest it so anywho anyone want to make some comments and stuff <laughs> Oh, I showed Ethan from the other two. Yeah. You need to take your medicine, though. I did. Okay. No one? All righty. So we'll go to the knees. Um, it's a second example. The knee is about, um, uh, it represents pride and ego, not bending to your inner compass, because that inner compass is going to lead you to a place of joy. And the solution is, um, to go to God again and ask him for guidance, okay? And uh, we you know, will be guided to have compassion and ease up. Um, and then what you do is you create new thinking patterns um, like I'm flexible and I'm flowing or I forgive freely, okay? An essential oil that uh, I would use for knees is, you know, I don't know for example, wintergreen is the oil of surrender. I let go of the need, um, uh, my limited uh, thinking and understanding. I rely and um, you know, I rely on the divine to protect and guide me. Okay. Uh, you would rub, rub it on, you would smell it. Cypress is the oil of motion and flow. You would put it on the knees and say, I let go of the need to control my situation. I flow with life. I'm safe as I adapt to changes. So I have a story about that. I think my husband, um, a few years ago, he got a job in the country, in the outback, the bush. And um, uh, I didn't want to go because we were living in Sydney and we had lots of family and friends there and we knew nobody in the country. And um, so I sent him off by himself <laughs> and he went. And I said, well, you know, if you like it, when then we'll go, we'll, we'll come with you, just check it out. So I really didn't want to. But it, it was God's will, you know. We felt inspired that, um, uh, you know, he, he needed to find a job, but we didn't, you know, we didn't see that it was um, uh, there that we needed to go. So he left, and I think about two months later, three months later, I was doing the dishes, and then my knees started throbbing, and I never have knee problems. And then I thought, what am I not flexible about? What am I not um, about? Right. And so when I asked myself those questions, I kind of searched through my mind and I discovered that, is it about the move? You know, and, it's, and I, in my head, I didn't, it didn't make sense because my kids were involved in all sorts of great things in Australia, in Sydney. I mean, they're singing at the opera house, you know, a great choir and all these other things. Michaela was a prefect. Um, but uh, I, I looked for the oil that I was meant to use and the winter green came up. And I thought, oh boy, <laughs> the oil of surrender. And, and I thought, well, it has, to be, it has to be for our good. It has to be for our joy. And it's, um, we just have to trust it. it. I don't know everything. I don't know what's going to happen um, you know, when we get there. But I just have to trust. And so immediately when I rubbed it on and I made that decision to go, um, it went away. And I, I never had that problem again. But it was so painful when I was standing there washing the dishes that I had to stop and ask myself, what is that about? Um, and then I had this big decision um, to make with my daughter. And what I did was just ask her. I said, look, this is the situation. This is what I felt. Um, this is my experience. My body is telling me this. And I allowed her to, to work through the pros and cons. And then she came up with the same solution. Um, but when we got to where we were about to, uh, in the country, I mean, we met friends that we'll have, we'll, we'll be friends with for life. And, um, and I'm, you know, forever grateful for God's intelligence. So, you know, you never know, you never know, but it's only for your good. So I don't um, really like to, uh, you know, when people say, I've got this health problem as if that's them for life you know I, I feel like it's a clue 
you know, get that information and go with it. Um, so like my friends with diabetes, a lot of them, I tell them what, you know, what sweetness can't you see? Ask yourself, look around, um, look for more sweetness in life. Life can't be that bitter because their pancreas is not metabolizing sweetness. So they're not seeing God's hands. Um, and so everything about them, is, around them, is, it looks like it's bitter. So I tell them, hey, let's work on that. And a lot of my friends, um, like my uncle, especially my uncle, when he worked on that and he used the oils to help him find sweetness, I mean, his problem was resolved in one year. And that was powerful. Um, so I want to hear from you guys. Uh, what do you think about the literal language of the body? Just go ahead and unmute yourself. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, the solution is always the same. It's just I just, yeah, I just feel like Heavenly Father is so wise, so wise to give us ways to clue in to what we really, really need, what we truly need, not what we think we need. Yeah. You know, and the answer, the solution to nearly every question, I feel like every question is the same. It's very practical. <laughs> right? That's the answer to every question. Yeah. And um, because it will lead us to happiness and joy. Yeah. Well, if you think about everything in the world, like everything is calling to us to acknowledge him in the creation, in our relationships, in, you know, our bodies, everything is pointing us to him. We just have to listen and acknowledge. So. That's right. Anyone else want to share or say anything? No, because once once we we know uh, once we're connected to him, we feel enough. We feel loved, and we, we feel that sense of peace and um, safety. You know, it's just satisfying and it's enough. So you don't have to uh, measure yourself against anything. To make yourself feel good. There's no need anymore. Yeah. I think it's funny because they're so accurate. Like um, a long time ago, I or not a long time ago, but um, months ago, I had like shoulders and everything. And you explained that to me then and showed me like, well, that usually means you're bearing a lot of burden. And then, and it was true. And so um, it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, but then I look at like the headaches and I can, it, I didn't see the knee problems until tonight, but I can look at it and see like my son's knees bother him. And it just like, you could see how it fits different people. And you're like, oh, it's so accurate. It's like spot on. Like, okay, I understand what's going on a little bit better because I know that they have like a wall there where they're, they used to be really faithful and they're faithful, but they just have a thing with not having their father there and um it's just affected their spirit and so i can understand i can see where these problems are bothering them and what is lying there without really having to yeah it's just well. <laughs> hard to not take that on and think i wish i could carry that all for you right but um somebody already paid for that pain Christ already paid for that for them. Right. Jade, I've also noticed that sometimes it um, <laughs> don't have to take away the thing that's making things happen. Like, say the shoulder problem with the burdens, taking on other burdens. You might not be able to let all of those go, but if you recognize that that's what the problem is, that that's causing the pain, then that can be lessened. Even though the burdens might still be there, you're able to bear them better. Yeah. Um, 
recognize it. And that could be the same for anything that's affecting our body or th this language of the body. Yeah. And Debbie, I think that goes along with your post earlier today when you asked about, what did you say? It was self, what? Tell self, me how. Yeah, self-betrayal, um, self-deception. Yeah, Talking so about self -deception. it kind of goes along with that too. You know, if we can deceive ourselves into thinking, I'm fine, everything's fine, I'm not, you know, I can handle it. And then we have this pain or this problem and we don't know why and it's because we're deceiving ourselves we need to acknowledge that we have this burden or this problem or whatever and then it's easier to deal with and it won't cause the physical problems that that, that can creep in if we deal with the emotional things and the spiritual things then the physical things kind of sort themselves out yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it helps us to change their thinking is to positive thinking. And so positive thinking starts to heal us. And you're going to have layers and layers at a time and your body will gauge how well you're doing. And that's a wonderful way of seeing how, um, how much progress you've made, right? Because sometimes we, we check the boxes, check the boxes, go to church, whatever. And, you know, but it's like, how is that making us a better person? And you feel like you're a better person. You feel like you, things don't bother you so much. Um, yeah. So are you feeling more confident about the literal language of your body and recognizing that? Yeah. Because yeah, that way, um, when you have friends that are not well, you know, yeah. you, really, you, don't, you don't feel overwhelmed and think, oh, my gosh, what do I do for you? How do I start? You go, oh. That's where, that's where your concern is. That's what is the immediate problem. That's what's going to, that we take care of. So that's what we first. We'll take care of that. And then um, we'll go down the list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys um, for joining us tonight. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.